Hill at Travel Studios. We're here with Ryan Silverfield, the head coach of the Memphis Tigers. Ryan, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me on this morning. Absolutely. So I want to start it off by something that I was saying to your athletic communications department, and that is the fact that nationally and everywhere I've traveled, the chicken barbecue at Memphis is still my favorite in the country. Yeah, look, as you can tell just looking at me, the, the barbecue in general in Memphis is the best in the country. Um, I've certainly have devoured almost every place and, and continue to do so. I probably need to stop you know, in order to get through the season healthy. But, yeah, the, the barbecue all throughout the entire city is great, and uh, I certainly appreciate it. Do you know, uh, like, to you, like, the place, is there a place for barbecue? That you know, just so say? what I tell people, when, you know, especially when people come to visit, they say, okay, hey, where'd I go? And so I say, hey, this is a great place for dry ribs. This is a great place for wet ribs. This is a great place for pulled pork. This is a great place for, you know, nachos, you know. I mean, fried bologna, burn in. So I've got all my places that they can go for specific ones. And, you know, I don't also can't shout out one place because we probably have a sponsorship with somebody and I'll find myself in trouble. But guess what? I've tried them all. And uh, when you come visit Memphis, I'll give you some more ideas. Fair enough. We look at the fact that the preseason poll typically gives you locker room material. How do you utilize a preseason poll that has Memphis at the top? You know what? We haven't accomplished a damn thing. We really haven't. I, as a head coach, haven't done a damn thing. Um, we understand as a team, there's a lot of work to be done. That, that's great. I appreciate the fact that the media, that other people uh, think highly enough us, you know, of us. But you know what? That's credit to Justin Fuente, Mike Lombrell, those people, and the teams of the past that helped put us on a national stage. Uh, but we got a lot of work to do. You know, there's games that. Uh, you know, we should have won last year. We didn't, you know, and a lot of close games that uh, we shouldn't have been in. That um, you know, we found ways to win, and, and a lot of work to do. But you know, Memphis also, in the history of the program, and 100 going on the 109th year of Memphis football, there's never been back-to-back 10-win -back games seasons. Um, so a lot of work to be cut out. You know, we're going to focus one game at a time, and that's not coach speak. That's the reality of it. Yeah. Um, appreciate the high expectations, but no one has higher expectations than I do for our program. You mentioned uh, Justin Fuente and Mike Norvell and, and what they've done for the program. To succeed them, what to you has kind of been your stamp on it so far and, and your place in the culture of the program? Yeah, look, uh, two great coaches, two great leaders uh, that, that did a great job acquiring talent and, and wonderful teams. But I think when it, you look back at it, college football has changed quite a bit since I took the job, right? My first game as a head coach was and the Cotton Bowl versus Penn State. That's a hell of a way to start the head coaching career in college football, yeah. um, which I appreciated. But then you go from there and you move on and you say, okay, now it's time. Well, oh, guess what? By the way, COVID's going to hit. Yeah. And then you got the transfer portal and NIL and, and a lot of other issues. So I think the biggest thing is just creating our own culture, being my own man, uh, creating the program the way I see fit. And it, you know what? It always starts with the players. It's about finding the right type of young men that fit the way we want to do it. Look, there's a lot of talented people that want to come to Memphis. But if they don't fit our family, if they don't fit our culture, if they're not willing to meet the standards day in and day out, um, then they're not the type of young men we want in our program. And I think understanding and saying, hey, this is what we're doing, this is the way we're going to do it, and we won't deviate from that, I think that's a culture we've been able to set and, and, and quite proud, and I think it leads over to wins. And when you look at this conference as a whole, when we speak on realignment, uh, Tim Pernetti and Mike Oresco, they've had to deal with this uh, repeatedly throughout history. Like Tim is talking about it now in just a few, you know, what, a month, over a month in office, but when we look at Mike Oresco, he's had to essentially have this conference rise like the Phoenix three or four times. Memphis has been brought up repeatedly. And what do you think about the American and Memphis's future in the American? Yeah, first off, the American Conference, I think it's the top of the top of the G5, whatever term we're using now, right? G4, who in the heck knows, right? <laughs> I don't know if we're supposed to be using that term, but. Uh, I think this is a very strong conference. I think you can just look out the history of the years of what the programs have been able to do, um, Memphis included, but some of these other programs that have continued to have success. Uh, I think the brand of football in the American is as strong as it's ever been. You know, currently adding Army, obviously a national brand is going to continue to make us stronger. Um, and look, I, I don't worry about conference realignment. There's nothing I can do about it. You know, uh, No one's called me and asked me uh, where I'd like to be or what I'd like to do. And that's a reality as much as head coaches' egos get in the way and think that we have the deciding factor. But I also don't think anybody woke up on a Wednesday morning and thought that UCLA and Rutgers would be playing you know, tennis matches across the country in the same conference. So that's the nature of it. Um, we're just going to focus on literally this season. I put the blinders on anyways because so many things occur uh, outside of our control. And then, you know what, if someone says, hey, we're in a different one, but just thrilled to be in the American, it's a great partnership. When you look at, uh, speaking on Mike Norvell, this season you're going to play against Florida State. 
And that's going to be, I believe, the first time that you guys will face each other yeah. after you took over from him being at Memphis. So bring me into that match. Yeah, look, you know, Mike and I, uh, we sat about this close to each other for about four years. So I think if there's two coaches that know each other uh, about as good as anybody, it's me and him. You know, I was very fortunate to learn so much from him. I was his right hand man. You know, he, he gave me every title under the sun. I think it ended with the deputy <laughs> head coach. And, I, mean, I was supposed to be on that plane with him down in Tallahassee for his press conference, but obviously things worked in favor, and he's done a tremendous job there. Uh, again, he's a, a friend, and, and I got so much respect for him. He taught me so much, and gave me, I wouldn't be here uh, if it weren't for him. But, you know, excited. Look, I, I look at it, and I truly mean this. It's just going to be the next game. Uh, they're they're going to be talented. They'll be a top-10 team in the country. Um, he, he's, known, he's done a great job with the transfer portal recruiting. He's a hell of a coach. He's got a heck of a staff, and so... I'm just excited to go out there and compete against a friend. And um, I know he's going to have his team ready. We'll have our team ready. But in my opinion, look, we're going to be playing. we got to take care of our first game, the second game, and that will be our first road game. Um, they'll be coming off a of bye week, so I'm sure he'll have some tricks up his sleeve. But, uh, you know, everybody says we all be talking smack. I think both of us will be too anxious anyways <laughs> to even have time to pick up the phone uh, other than maybe some, you know, some blurbs before the game starts. Before we get into rapid fire, where you actually get to ask some questions as a coach, why do you think the media picked this Memphis Tigers team to be first? What is it about your student athletes this specific season? Yeah, I think right. You, you look at the talent that we have, and it starts with the quarterback, a guy like Seth Hennigan, uh, who had opportunities, who a lot of people came after, and you know called and poked and prodded at to try to get to transfer and, and go to other places. And uh, the young man, uh, him and I had some very candid conversations and very transparent. Said, you know what, this is the best fit. Yeah. Guys like Chandler Martin, uh, Rock Taylor, D Demir Blankensee, Kobe Drake. I mean, name after name. Sutton Smith. I mean, we can, can go on and on. Greg Rubin on defense. So, you know, there's there's a lot of guys that said, you know what, we've got a lot more to accomplish. And um, I think the, you know what has happened is the momentum from last season, right? Um, had we lost that Charlotte game in overtime, had we lost to North Texas instead of winning on the last play, um, you know, I don't know if I'm sitting here right now. And, and I think the way the season ended. And um, you know, winning versus Iowa State in our own stadium was huge. And so there's a lot of momentum going forward. So uh, I appreciate that. And, I, and I, I'm grateful that the media thinks highly enough and puts us on a national spotlight. But we have so much work to do. Uh, it's a long ways away. And we're just going to focus on the first game. Well, let's jump in a rapid fire here on Wake Up Call. You get to ask literally anything. It could be football related, life, whatever you want. No, where are you based out of? Based out of New York. OK. Best place to eat in New York. Best place to eat in New York. So I'm in upstate New York. We have a lot of Italians up there. I would say to tell you to go to Laska's because they still have huge portions. And post-COVID, their prices are actually still good. So I'd say the veal parmesan probably at Laska's. Okay. Yankees fan? My grandfather and my dad, yes. I have a sympathy, but I'm actually a Diamondbacks fan. How, how does that work? Are you one of those <laughs> New Yorkers that goes and spends the winters in Arizona like the rest of them? I wanted my own team, and I'm a huge Randy Johnson fan. Uh, it's hard not to like Randy Johnson. Yeah. I think any time I think of Randy Johnson, I think, still think about that damn poor pigeon getting hit by the <laughs> fastball. But yeah. uh, I'd like to be able to t teach these guys, these young men, about the unit. All right, Giants, Jets, who's your team? Between the two of those, I'm a Jaguar fan. Okay, I'm from Duval. Okay, Let's you go. are from yeah. Duval. Okay, okay. yes, okay. I, okay. yes I'm a Jaguar. Wanted my own team. What the hell? I like, I mean, you're one of those Northeasters <laughs> that just loves the teams in the South. I don't have, see, the thing is, I didn't want any bandwagon teams. And so I started, I went with Jacksonville year one. I went with the Toronto Raptors in the NBA year one, which is four hours away from home. But Diamondbacks in 1998. But uh, if I had to choose between the Giants and the Jets, I would say that my closest friends are Jets. And... One of my really good friends is Nate Hackett, offensive okay. coordinator. Yeah. So I'm going to pick him. Absolutely, because well, he knows he knows if I didn't. Yeah, he'd and freak if he's out. listening on, yeah, <laughs> Nate does a good great job. All right, and then with that being said, all right, you're Jaguars, best Jaguar of all time. Man, best Jaguar of all time. That's a tough one. I mean, my all-time favorite is Fred Taylor. Yeah, it's hard not to. I mean, I love Fred Taylor. Obviously, being from the state of Florida. Uh, I think he meant everything to the Jaguars. You know, I think the single best player, and again, his career was cut short. Tony Baselli. Yeah. Hard, hard to argue that he wasn't just so dominant during his prime. Let's go. I'm glad you're a Jaguars fan. Okay. Where'd you go to college? I went to Marywood University in Scranton, Pennsylvania. So D3. Yeah. I was yes. recruited to play D3 ball. Nice. Ended up broadcasting. Went talked to the coach, and he was like, "Hey, come work out with us." 
and I was coming off a of coach in high school that we were not, my team was not very fond of. So I was a little bitter at the moment. Okay. And he was like, well, you know, come out and run with us or whatever. They gave me a roommate from the team. And I ended up, I never even met him, ended up switching roommates on that first weekend and then got called in 12 minutes before a game in November and got asked to emergency be the broadcaster. And that started my 20 plus year career. The so, rest is history, right? The rest is history. Yeah, I'll play, I gotta figure out the best way to get up to upstate New York. My niece will be, not this year, but she's committed to play tennis at Colgate. So look forward to going up there. Uh, not in the winter time. Yeah. So you uh, and I have a bunch of unique connections here. That's right. So you did rapid fire better than any coach that I've ever had. It's well, how good. quick like you did all that well, and the answers. Well, but I want to hit you with just a couple because you're Duval. Okay. So I have a face for radio, so maybe when my coaching <laughs> career is done, we can do this and not have me on the podcast. That's fair enough, right? But you know, when you look at when you look at Jacksonville and all of the rumors, anytime there's any talk about a team leaving, a team going somewhere because they played overseas so much, are you sick and tired of hearing that Jack the Jaguars were going to leave Jacksonville? Yeah, I am. You know, first and foremost, I, I, I was fortunate I coached in the NFL for seven years, so I've actually coached in Jacksonville versus the Jaguars. But I have so much pride, right? Like, I think it's yep. Jackson is one of those cities that has a lot of pride, like Memphis, like Detroit, uh, that's got so much pride in itself. And it, it, I think the, the people of Jackson just get so sick and tired here. Like, oh, we're moving to London. Hey, you got Shad Khan, an international owner, who has obviously done a trem tremendous job for the city. But I think then, then, hey, this is what we're doing with the stadium. Here's what we're doing. Um, I understand playing the international series. I get that. It's great for the brand. It's great for uh, the NFL. But I think the fans were finally happy when they said, hey, we're putting all this money in the stadium. We're up, you know, going to continue to rebuild downtown. All these great things are going to happen. I think, okay, whew, we can sit here and say, and then maybe in retirement I can go to some games and, I mean, you can you know, tailgate and go drink some drag, uh, beers and go watch the Jaguars play. So essentially, are you DTWD, Duval, till we die? Absolutely. All right, okay. Yeah, I got Duval tattooed on one arm, 904 on the other, DTWD on the, the, the stomach <laughs> tattooed across, right underneath my cash money tattoo. We're ready to roll. I like that. Coach, as always, I appreciate Man, your time. I appreciate it, yeah. And absolutely. my best to you this season. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Thank you.